Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I was asked to uh, come today to talk to you about NASA's 5i creative process. And I thought it would be helpful to also share some lessons learned and a little bit on the mindset component. When anyone creates or innovates, there's a process component, but there's also a mindset component. Understanding both of those helps you to find areas that you could make improvements on to enhance your creative abilities. So even though we're going to touch on these at a very high level today, I encourage you to go back and read more on creativity and innovation and also stay up to date on your areas of expertise. When you do the research, you'll probably find that there's various versions of the creative process out there. They're all fundamentally the same. It's um, usually that they've changed the title of the different stages. So a few lessons that I've learned is that we're all creative and we can all be more creative. Fear and filters are the enemies of creativity. Innovation is an equal opportunity employer, and fun can be hard work, and trust and follow your passion. So there's a, a misconception that you're either born creative or not. And the truth is that we all have creativity within us, and that we can all enhance that creativity by changing our mindset, taking training, uh, learning additional tools, and other aspects. So research shows that the training alone can increase your ability to generate ideas, and it can also increase your ability to generate higher quality ideas. And this, I thought, was really interesting. The research also shows that the verbal criticism goes down for those who have taken the training. Verbal support goes up, and people actually laugh and smile more. So that's a good reason to just take class. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick exercise with you, uh, trying to keep this a little bit fun. Look under your chairs, and you'll pull out. There's a card and a Sharpie marker. Take the tape off. Didn't know you were going to have to work, right? <laughs> and I want you to print your full name on just one side and leave the other side blank. And once you've printed your name, I want you to find somebody that sitting directly beside you, behind you, or in front of you, something that you can see, and trade cards. <laughs> Does everybody have somebody to trade with? Are we good? No, oh, we lucked out then. <laughs> um, so you're going to have 20 seconds, and since I can't see, I'm using my clock. <laughs> you are going to draw a portrait of the person who just gave you that card. <laughs> so I want to see some masterpieces when we finish, and you can go ahead and start right now. Go. <laughs> Okay, got 10 seconds. Yep, 
Five? All right, pins up. <laughs> now I want you to pass that card back to the owner. These are your new business cards. <laughs> So hold on to these cards because we're going to use them again today. But I hear a lot of laughter, um, see a lot of smiles, maybe a few apologies. <laughs> and what's interesting is that as young children, we share ideas very freely. But when we become adults, all of a sudden that fear sets in and we get nervous to share an idea. I know. Um, there's an anxiety that can come across you in a meeting when you're thinking of an idea and you think, oh no, that's stupid, and then you keep your mouth shut <laughs> because you're just worried about what other people think. And that really is limiting our ability to create and innovate. Um, our whole culture is hurt by that. So I challenge you the next time that you have that feeling to take the risk to go forward and share the idea because there's a lot of crazy ideas that end up being the key to the innovation that we're looking for. So share your idea because it's going to be also something that happens that's going to cause a create a contagious movement. Because when one person does it, another person feels more comfortable to do it. So again, these fears and filters that are probably there for good reason originally, are really limiting our thinking in the, in the long run. So I, there is a difference between the threat of death and the threat of showing, sharing an idea, or even public speaking, although I feel like I could die. <laughs> Innovation is an equal opportunity employer. Here, I just wanted to stress the point that I've learned. Innovation can occur anywhere, at any time. It doesn't care what age you are. It doesn't care where you work, what you do. It doesn't care if it's you're sleeping. It, you know, it, it can happen anywhere. So keep an open mind and look for it. So we're going to do one more exercise. And this time, you actually have to get up out of your seats but uh, you're also going to have to get back to your seats quickly. <laughs> you're going to take the card, your new business card, and you're going to find someone in the room that you don't know. And I want you to introduce yourself, say what organization you're from, and then come back to your seats. So let's go ahead and do it really quick. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to get a chance later, hopefully, to talk. Um, go ahead and take a seat back again. <laughs> so that wasn't too painful, was it? <laughs> so networking and diversity are huge to creativity and innovation. In the creative process, it's really important to get diverse ideas and diverse feedback. And in innovation, you really need a diverse um, network to get your ideas implemented. The more people you know, the more you can do. So I challenge you to go back at a later time, the person you just met, and sometime this week, it could be after in the reception today, it could be an email, a phone call, lunch. Get back together with that person and learn more about them, their organization, and see if there's any ways that you can collaborate. The other challenge that I want to put out there that I was thinking this week, 
was that every single person out here should know at least one person in every organization, at least one. Because if we don't know how the system works, how can we innovate and create? So fun can be hard work. You, if you're passionate about something, you can have a lot of fun with it. But there's a, also a misconception when people see um, others having fun that they're not working very hard. But actually, innovation is a lot of hard work, and you have to be prepared for that. When I was growing up, one thing that has really helped me was my father would say no at least eight times when I asked for anything. So I learned early on to reset my expectations. I knew that I was going to have to ask eight times before I even had the possibility of a maybe. And I had a choice then. I could have just given up or reset my expectations. So again, I challenge you to reset your expectations. Expect that it's going to be hard work. It's going to take a lot of tries. That's just the way it is if you're innovating. Trust and follow your passion. People, a lot of times, are not happy in their jobs. And one of the reasons is because they aren't using their talents to the fullest, and they aren't tying their passions into their work. And I know that's difficult sometimes, and I hear that a lot. So I'd like you to try an exercise when you go back, too, and that is, List on one side where you feel your talents lie and the things that you love to do. Then list in another column the things that you have to do at work. Then try to really force generate some ideas there. What could you do at work differently? What could you innovate at work and at the same time may make you happier to be there? This is just another example about loving what you do. Small business owners, 57% um, work six or more days a week. And I've also found this research that shows if you're passionately tied to your community and what you do, it actually, you'll see an increase in economic growth. So just to, sh to share, uh, I felt like I needed to uh, share my own talents and what I do, um, so I created a video for you today to watch and um, help show you a little bit about the creative process and mindset. What can I make? And I, I was having this problem where I, I couldn't think of anything to make, and I thought, a generator. That would be really cool to make.
So then, it, it sort of just, I don't know, it sort of just came to my head out of nowhere. Part the perfectly good bicycle because it, it said in his head that's how he should do it. So the bicycle that he's using right now was a perfectly fine bicycle. Played with them, played around, messed with them, take them apart again, just messing with like all these random things. Lays them around the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually how the bike was made, was messing around with stuff. Seeing what would happen if we put two to two together, like a bike and a generator. I mean. pushers we grab one of these things and we ended up take tearing off the seat adding in some wood adding in a foot rest and so we pull this thing up to the top of this hill and we're just riding down the street in this baby carrier I mean it, it was fun like <laughs> sometimes you just gotta grab the garbage <laughs> <laughs>
I was actually using the Dremel tool and to cut this thing and I was it was my bad and I was trying to push it too hard because I was rushing it because it was taking forever really it was the wrong tool for the job and so I ended up accidentally burning the plastic inside this cutting board and it's called polymer fume fever Literally, like, it started off in my hand, and I couldn't feel my hand, and I would, like, touch something, and it would be, like, sort of thing, and it would just mess with me. And I did it again. One of the phases of his project, he decided he was going to try wind power. And as he tried wind power, when his parents are at work and he's with his great grandmother who's in her late 80s, um, he took the fan apart, taking the guards off of both sides. And him and great Grammy carried that out to the end of the pier on a windy day. Um, let's just say that he got plenty of current and plenty of voltage uh, on the plug. Uh, but at the same time, he used his hand to stop the fan because it was spinning too fast. So uh, luckily, he's got all of his digits uh, remaining right now um, as his creativity was uh, um, quite healthy. Everything is a learning experience, as long as you listen. Well, I don't like reading, alright? I hate reading. I can't stand reading. just like one hour goes by, two hours goes by, three hours goes by. The next day I'm still working on it. Like, cannot tell you how many times it's 10 o'clock down there and I'm just like just messing with stuff. my kitchen over doing that and if anybody was speaking to me in the house it probably would have been funny to have pictures of me actually trying to do that video myself. <laughs> I have the pieces over there if anybody wants to take a look at uh, the parts to make the video. Um, I wanted to leave you with just a reminder of what you can do when you go back. So these are the lessons learned and in blue is what you can go back and do. Take some training. We have the classes. I've got brochures over here that we're offering. It's a lot of fun. Um, learn and read every day. I, I started a few years ago and set a goal to read at least five, ten minutes more every day. And it's been huge. And that's grown to where I'll interact on sites five or ten minutes every day. And it really does help a lot. Challenge your fears and try new things. Network more. Appreciate our diversity at all levels. 
and look for opportunities for innovation. Expect it to be a rough ride, but still have fun. Um, help and pat each other on the back, and force generate ideas to tie your talents and passions to your job. So the last one, um, Jeremy's getting ready to talk, and he is a perfect example of tying your passion into your job and how it's helped. Um, I told him I just recently read that when you're in a better mood, that your creativity actually goes up. And one of the things that it said that can put you in the best mood the quickest is music. So thank you, and I uh, hope you'll enjoy Jeremy's talk. I was looking for him. <laughs>